Cisco Intersight is available as a service in two regions, one in the US and another one in Germany. But when you want to have more control over your data, you can choose to deploy our virtual appliance on your own infrastructure. The virtual appliance comes in two flavors, private and connected. And the connected virtual appliance or CVA provides you with some additional features like automatic software updates. So that means that the appliance will update itself if you want, during a service window that you can configure, we have proactive RMA. And that means when a memory dim or disk fails, we can automatically create an RMA for you. And again, this can also be disabled. We have connected tech, which means you can directly open a tech case on your devices. But more importantly, tech can also automatically pull tech support bundles to save you time downloading and uploading those yourself. Again, all these features can be enabled or disabled individually, so you can configure the appliance exactly to match your data privacy requirements. One thing to take into consideration is that when you choose to run the virtual appliance on your own infrastructure, you're also responsible for the performance availability and disaster recovery of your appliance. That's why it's super important to configure the backup of your appliance after you deployed it. Before you deploy the CVA, there are some important pre-requirements. The appliance can be deployed in a medium or large size. A medium requires 24 vCPU and 64 gigabytes of memory, and it can manage 500 servers, and it supports metric collections for 500 servers. The large appliance requires 48 vCPU and 96 gigabytes of memory, and it can manage 8,000 servers and do metric collection for 2,000 servers. Both sizes require two terabyte of storage, mostly needed for storing the metric data. We support multiple hypervisors, but for VMware we require ESXi 7.0 or higher. The CVA needs to have connectivity to intersite.com, smart licensing and our download page, but we support proxies. Finally, you will connect to the CVA on HTTPS port 443, and it needs to be able to reach the devices you want to manage on their required ports. So make sure to open your firewalls. But by far the most important step and most common mistake during appliance installations is the DNS setup. You will need to create an FQDN in your DNS server, including a reverse lookup. Without the PTR record, which is used for the reverse lookup, the installation will not succeed as this is how we determine the host name during the installation. Second, for your devices to connect to your appliance, you will need to create a DNS alias that starts with DC dash and then your FQDN. After you have correctly set up your DNS, you can go ahead and download the latest OVA from software.cisco.com. Then you need to upload the OVA to your vCenter environment or web server, and you're all set to start the deployment of the appliance. In vCenter, you can choose to deploy an OVF template, and here you can paste the URL to your OVA or upload from a local file. It will show you the SSL certificate, which you need to accept, and then you can provide the name for the virtual machine. You choose the location, after you selected the location for the VM, you can choose the compute resource on which you would like to deploy the VM. And then it will start reading the OVA file and provide you with some information. Here you can choose the size of your appliance and we're gonna go with a medium size. You can pick your data store and more importantly, your disk format. We recommend to use stick provisioning but if you want, you can use thin provisioning, but be careful not to over provision. You can choose the network which you want the VM to use and you only need one network interface, which needs to be routable. Here you can provide all the specifications or customizations for the VM image. You can provide the IP address, the net mask, the default gateway, the DNS domain, and the DNS server, now this is very important, as I said, during the installation, we do a reverse lookup of that IP address to determine the host name of the VM. After you make sure all your network and DNS settings are correct, you can enter 
the administrator password and an NTP server. You can choose to modify the disk size for some of the disks, but I recommend to leave them as is. You are now presented with an overview of the settings that you configured and the installation will start. I've speed up the, this process and after the installation of the overview is complete, you can go to your VM and you can power it on. After the VM is turned on, the first thing to do is make sure that the VM has the correct host name. If this host name is not correct, something is wrong and you have to fix it. Next, I recommend you to log in and try to do a connectivity test just to make sure that you can reach all the required services in your network. After a while, you can go to the HTTPS address of your appliance and you'll be able to log in to the appliance installer. We are going to install a connected virtual appliance. So when you select the first option, the first thing it wants to do is connect out to the internet. So you need to have an intersight account available where you're going to claim this appliance in. Now my appliance needs to have a proxy setting and you can configure the proxy for the device connector under the settings page. As soon as it's able to reach out to the internet, you will, be a, you will receive a device ID and a claim code. Then you can take that device ID and claim code to go to your Intersight account and claim the appliance. In your account, you go to targets, claim a new target and you select an Intersight appliance. There you enter the device ID and the claim code that you received earlier and then the device claim is finished. The next step will do another check of your network requirements, making sure that you can reach all the Cisco services on the internet that are needed for downloading the packages in the next step. You have the option to change your internal network. This is only required when you have certain services within your organization that the appliance need to reach, for example, an SMTP server or an LDAP server that have an IP address in that same range. This range will never leave the appliance, but it's an internal network that we use. If you have services that are in the same range, we will not reach to them because we think it's local traffic. So in that case, please change the network address. Otherwise, just leave it as is. It's only internal and this range will never ever leave the appliance. Because we use the connected virtual appliance, you have the ability during the installation to make sure you download the latest software package directly from the internet. When the installation starts, the first step for us is to download all the required packages. This may take some time depending on your internet connection. After that's done, we will make sure that all the services are brought up and the appliance is ready for use. I'm going to speed up this process and when we're done, we're going to log in to our fresh new appliance. Now, when you log in to your appliance for the first time, you will need to complete the setup. And the first question we're going to ask you is if you will allow Intersight to send additional system information to Cisco. This will help us to provide better support whenever something is wrong with your appliance or the underlying devices. And then the final step is to license the appliance. You need to get a product reservation code, which you can get from your smart licensing portal. When you go to inventory, you can create a product instance registration token. Just provide a name for the token. And after it's created, you can copy it, paste it into the appliance. And when it's completed, the setup has finalized. As I said in the beginning, please do not forget to configure your backup and enjoy the Intersight appliance.